This session is about CanOpen, and CanOpen is a protocol on top of CAN, the controller area network, which has been in use in microcontrollers for more than 30 years. Originally designed for automotive applications, today CAN and CanOpen are present in very many very different application fields. On the upcoming slides, we'll show you how easy it is to use CanOpen on NXP microcontrollers. The CAN version history began in the early 90s when CAN 2.0a and 2.0b were introduced. The only difference between the two were that the 11-bit CAN message identifier was extended to a 29-bit version. So these are today compatible with each other. In the beginning, you had to double check that you were using the real hardware to support it. But today, typically all CAN controllers support the CAN 2.0b version. And so on the fly, they can switch between 11 and 29-bit identifiers. One of the recent version extensions was CANFD. It stands for flexible data rate. And in CANFD, the data field can be up to 64 bytes long and it can be transmitted at a higher rate, at a higher bit rate. Here, some implementations do 10 or more bits per second. Unfortunately, such a change is not backward compatible. So if you're using a CAN controller that only speaks CAN 2.0 AOB, will not be able to participate in CAN FD communication and it will not only not participate, it will actively destroy these messages with error frames because it doesn't know how to handle them. So when using CAN FD, all CAN controllers in the network must support it. And down the line, there's CAN XL extra long, which is currently under specification. Here, the main change from CAN FD to CAN XL is that the data field is even longer. However, there will be a bit used in here that uh, allows CAN FD controllers to ignore the contents. So at least it will be partially compatible in a way that CAN FD controllers will not destroy CAN XL messages. They'll simply ignore them if they can't deal with them. There have been a number of higher layer protocols published for various CAN versions. Some of the earliest and more popular ones were DeviceNet and um, by the Society of Automotive Engineers, the J1939 used a lot in automotive applications, but there's also CanOpen and CanOpen, the nice thing about CanOpen is that it really covers all applications. It's not dedicated to a specific use field like industrial, automotive, aerospace, maritime. No, it uh, can cover a lot of that. And here the latest add-on is that now there's also can open FD, which takes advantage of the extended data field provided by can FD. Coming from the automotive arena, CAN quickly got adopted by many different application fields simply because CAN controllers were deeply integrated into almost every microcontroller family available. Today, you can not only find CAN open in medical application and hospital beds, you can also find it in many industrial applications. Typically, a lot of electrical motors and drives are available with CAN open interfaces. So everything moving with electric motors and drives is uh, one of the strongholds of CAN open applications. But that also includes a lot of construction machinery so any crane or even forklifts and similar devices. In uh, maritime applications, we can even find safety critical control elements. So there's a safety version on CanOpen and we can definitely also see it in uh, building automation. For example, there's a specific dedicated CanOpen specification for elevator and lift control. So what are the advantages of a higher layer protocol like CanOpen? Well, to take full advantage of your CAN or CANFD controller, you have to start assigning messages to certain purposes. And a higher layer protocol like CanOpen already does that for you. So you have services for network management that includes device detection, operating states, heartbeats, being able to send devices a reset. 
Next, we have service access, service protocol. So this is a point-to-point -point communication for any data size. So even if you have complex data tables in drives, acceleration curves, or things like that to transfer, you can transmit data of any size, even if a single CAN or CANFD message is limited in, in data size. In regards to pure data access, there are multicast messages, so from one device to many others at the same time, with lots of different trigger options. We can do time triggers, change of state triggers, so really flexible on that end. And last but not least, we have many device and application profiles published by the CIA, the CAN in Automation Users Organization. These include in-depth definitions for how to control a motor, a drive, an encoder, or sometimes even uh, complete applications. Like I said before, an elevator system. They have by now thousands of pages of specification published. What is now new about CanOpen and NXP is that we have CanOpen fully integrated into the MCU Expresso SDK. If you go to the MCU Expresso webpage and start the SDK builder and select a device with CanCanFD interface for which we have CanOpen integrated, it will show up in the list of middleware that you can load into your SDK. Then just select the toolchain you are using, like MCU Expresso, Kyle, IAR, or all of them, download your SDK, and you are ready to go. The can open libraries included are based on the micro can open plus implementation by Embedded Systems Academy. That is a proven protocol that has been around for more than 15 years. The first devices supported include the LPC 546 series and the i.mx RT series. After you downloaded the SDK build, including the can open libraries, you can start your favorite IDE and directly import our CanOpen examples from that SDK package. Although the libraries themselves are not available as source code, a lot of the configurations and API are available as source code, so you can highly configure the CanOpen implementation towards your own needs. For a first trial, you can simply rebuild the demos provided, download to the boards and execute there. There are two library versions provided. The can open device library is for simple I.O. devices. So these could be sensors, but also even actuators, digital inputs, outputs, and have a limited number of PDOs. And the node ID needs to be in the range of 1 to 10. The second library provided is that for can open manager. So this is the master controller controlling up to 10 nodes on the system. So it can communicate with the sensors and actuators, inputs and outputs. It detects their heartbeats, can send them the operating state, change messages, reset requests, and things like that. Both libraries can be customized. As mentioned before, they can have their own custom object dictionary with the communication parameters and process data variables that you want to communicate in your application. But we can also customize all these PDOs. Now the PDOs, the process data object, are the CAN messages transporting data, and these are completely configurable. The libraries provided are free to use in your products, so as long as you keep them as is, you can use them in your products, so that gives you the chance to control up to 10 can open devices in your network. The Embedded Systems Academy offers commercial version of these libraries. They support up to 127 nodes as specified in the can open documents. To run our demos, you need two boards because one needs to be programmed with the device library and the other one needs to be programmed with the manager library. To connect the boards, you'd require the appropriate CAN cabling, potentially termination resistors at the end. CAN specifies that you have termination resistors of 120 ohms on each end of the communication. 
an optional CAN monitor or analyzer is really helpful to see what's going on on the network. For that, you need an additional CAN interface and some monitoring or analyzing software. We recommend the PCAN USB interface from Peak System and of course our own CAN Open Magic monitoring software, but there are other software packages on the market that also give you an idea about what has been communicated on the CAN network. This table contains a trace recording generated with CAN Open Magic. So from left to right, the columns are the message we saw, the CAN ID, the message type, the node ID involved, and some detailed interpretation of what this message does. Let's look at some of the lines. For example, line number six, CAN message ID zero. This is the highest priority, most important message in a CAN open system. It's the network management master request message. And here it's a request to all nodes to reset. Typically a manager does that to ensure that we have a clean, fresh start right after powering up. Lines 10 and 11 show an SDO, a service data object request. So this is a service request to node number three from the manager to write the heartbeat time. And the value here written is uh, 750 milliseconds. So here the manager instructs the device to start a heartbeat using a 750 millisecond timer. There are several more SDO requests back and forth between the manager and the device node number three until line 21, where we see another network management master request. This is the command to node number three to switch into operational mode. And this means transmitting the process data from then on and on line 22 and 23 as a result to that request, we see that node number three starts transmitting their process data. To simplify the customization, we provide an electronic data sheet editor. Now the EDS, the electronic data sheet is the specification of all the can open communication and data parameters. And we provide the can open architect mini for free download and use, and that can be used to edit the object dictionary with all the contents and the data that you want to communicate. And once you're done, we can export the C source code from that tool and import to the SDK so that you can directly build your own code based on these configurations. On the programming side, all data communicated goes into a process image and we provide read and write functions to this process image using symbol names for the offsets. So the symbol names get auto-generated from the EDS editor and you in your code can directly use these abbreviations. So the example we see here is the read process data. So reading process data from the process image and uh, it's transferred to the variable analog out. We have two bytes of data and the symbol name here is analog output 16 the first. Let's wrap it up. If you're not using a higher layer CAN protocol, you're stuck with CAN and CANFD by itself. So all you have is the option to transmit and receive individual messages, but you are not controlling any application yet. You need to sit down and define what message do I need to use for what. And that is something a higher layer protocol can do for you. So can open and can open FD allows you to take full advantage of what can and can FD have to offer. And now it's easy to use with MCU Expresso SDK because there are integrations that are free to use up to 10 nodes and up to eight or 32 PDOs. Looking at what we have planned for future releases, We'll definitely try to add more and more devices that we support. We want to include both can open, can open FD and some of the uh, extended services, potentially looking at things like layer setting services, LSS and others. One of the other steps involves CanCrypt security to integrate that and potentially further down the road also 
solutions for J1939.